Tarnished. That guts build is not the only build in the game. Shocking, I know. You need something new for the DLC. Take this Necromancer build, for instance. He's cool and interesting. Or how about this Beastmaster build? He's a pretty tantalizing option, too. So I'll be ranking all of these builds I think would be best suited to take advantage of the new spells and weapons the DLC will probably offer, showing their pros and cons. Starting off that same Necromancer build I mentioned before, here it is. Necromancer's spells are so painfully underutilized and unoptimized, having scaling all over the place, split faith and intelligence hybrid, ugh, and spells that demand your very life and soul if you want to optimize them properly. So because of that, these stats on screen are nowhere near optimal in terms of how many stats you'd normally want in a standard build from a PvP standpoint, since you'd usually want 50, but we've spec'd just enough intelligence and faith to where we could use every death spell possible while keeping a good amount of HP. But if you want to focus more on up close combat, I bring the mine down to about 16 and dump the rest into vigor so you can reach 60 vigor. But let's have a look at the trailer. Even though nothing seemed related to death spells in the trailer, if you really think about it, there are only four death spells in the game. But Miyazaki in the past introduced new spells in the DLC for spell categories that didn't have much in the base game. Hex is in DS3 receiving a huge buff because they got a proper staff with the murky long staff and great soul dregs or lightning arrow for faith builds. The previous DLCs are known to give lesser used options much needed tools. Cause who the hell is using ghost flame ignition? Did you even know that this was a spell? This build struggles with lack of poise from the low stamina and the pretty limited weapon variety due to low dexterity and strength. Not to mention the lower scaling we'd be getting from our intelligence stats since it's not hitting the hard cap of 50. Intelligence faith hybrids are in such a bad spot in this game. My hopes are low key low, but there is a little bit, there's a little bit of hope, and my copium will not let me drop that. Something my copium will definitely not let me drop is this footage. Bros, call me crazy, but the comparison is kind of uncanny. Pure Dex is a build that, if I'm correct, will easily be the best for the DLC for the simple fact of, please don't let this be a Nash board, this weapon possibly coming back. For those who didn't experience peak, the B team at FromSoft cooked with this weapon in Dark Souls 2. Insanely fun moveset, good but reasonable damage, and a Kamehameha attack, they turned the average fist weapon into something that was easily my favorite weapon in the game. I can't say what the general consensus on it was, since I started playing the game and there was only 6 people left playing it, but I'm sure there is a bone fist believer out there somewhere. So that being said, there's no real downsides to a pure dex build besides th the lack of spells, but if the bone fist is coming back, psh, man, I don't need none, just saying, I don't need one. Dexterity gets access to all the great broken things about the game, mainly counterattack damage from thrusting weapons, so the Dragon King's Crag Blade is a great option. The jumping attack on this is nuts, it's crazy. It does so much damage and the range is so freaking far. But even though I don't have them, here's dual Uchi Katanas. Yeah, you can enjoy the off-brand footage right here. The Beastmaster is what I like to call this build, inspired by my Dragonborn build, which you can watch after this. So I was really interested when I saw this roaring incantation in the trailer, and if it's gonna scale anything like these incants do, then this stat spread seems to be like a safe bet to maximize its damage. FromSoft will probably slip in an extra dragon or breath incantation somewhere, so you can get ahead while you can by making this build and laugh at your friends when you pull out some crazy incantation they've never seen when the DLC drops. The downsides though? Again, low vigor. If you want to have more vigor, you can drop the faith to around 40 and put the rest into your health. The talisman I'm wearing is mainly to help boost stats, which in hindsight, try to hit the stats you want through level up because lowering your absorption is never a good thing, especially when you're at level 125. You shouldn't be using talismans to hit those caps that you want to hit on your stats. The roaring talisman helps with the beast's roar and every dragon incantation to boost its damage, with the Highland Axe also adding to this damage boost. The Ripple Blade and Halberd are great options too, since they have an S scaling in Arcane, so you can try them out and see how it works for you. What's great about the build too is because it has high Arcane, any status ailment will quickly build too. So Sleep Grease, 
blood, rot, anything should build up very quickly if applied on the ripple weapons. The build might be a bit weird to get used to since your spells have a decent amount of cast time, but I'd say it's worth it if the new roars that will be added into this game scale similarly to how we have the dragon incantations in the base game. Faith. Faith builds are eating sublimely. Already with these two new incantations, I can tell that this one, hopefully, is going to be a better version of Scarlet Aeonia. But more importantly, the Crucible Wings. Finally, bros, we can ascend to greatness. Pure Faith is pretty easy to spec into, so you shouldn't have any problems stat-wise. There are no real downsides to using Pure Faith either, because besides hitting weapon requirements for weapons you want to use, everything will scale well into Faith when Flame Art or Sacred Art is applied to it. You can adjust your mind based on how many spells you want to use and how often you use them, but I like to keep it on the lower end since I mainly use them to complement my melee. You also have options for pretty fun weapons too. One of my favorites is the Magma Curved Greatsword. If you get hit by that Ash of War, the second part, you will probably get packed up because that thing is insanely strong. If those two incantations were an indication for anything, Faith is the safest option to take advantage for the DLC weapons because there's probably going to be a lot of things that scale with it. But why do I say the safest option and why is it not number one? Well. Blood Mage is my favorite build in Elden Ring and the one that's in contention for being the best contender to receive something great in the DLC. The main things to point out is we have 28 faith for Grail's Roar and we just dump the rest into Arcane for the scaling. Since it's a bleed build, naturally it's going to do well in general just because everything in this game is insanely prone to bleeding. Things like the Thorned Whip helps a lot with bleed buildup when infused with bleeding, or dual occult Uchigatanas for a fun melee focused variation on the build. And interweaving dragon magic into the Blood Mage is very cool to me too. The most practical one being Grail's Roar, since people get hit by it, they'll have their damage and defense reduced for a period of time, and it has a decently fast cast time when you have the Radagon's Icon equipped. For the spells I like to use, I mainly like using Blood Boon and Blood Talons. I feel like those two, alongside your Blood Flies and Grail's Roar, are the four spells you're probably going to be using the most. Blood Mages, we may be few in number, but, but we will feast in the DLC, mark my words. Grab yourself a plate, get this build, and come eat with me on June 11th when this DLC comes out.